Okay, so uh, welcome back, Lab 7. This is the experimental part, and we're going to take you through all the, um, the, the, the technical setup of the device. Um, this is all so nicely contained. I'm sure when Thompson did it the first time, his lab was a mess of wires. But uh, over time, they've been able to really get things down into a small package. But anyway, this down here is a, a four four different power supplies built into one. This is a 12 volt power supply. It puts out five, uh, four amps. This is going to control the magnetic field, the Helmholtz coil. So as you see, it puts out a lot of current so I can get a lot of B field. The next one is the filament. This creates the swarm of electrons uh, around that little filament, like the filament on a light bulb. And it only goes to 8 volts, but it's got 3 amps going to it. And uh, the the um, resistance of the filament is very low, so you get a lot of heat going on inside that filament. We're not using this power supply. And then this is the accelerating voltage here. This goes from 0 to 500 volts. Notice it's got very little current, but you know, <laughs> we just want a little beam of electrons, and it doesn't take much. By the way, when you accelerate an electron, it gives off light. And that's that color you're seeing, that blue-green light that forms the beam. Okay? Now, I want to keep track of the current. So right here I got 3.108 amps coming from the supply for the B field. So right here, this is the B field. And so I got it going through the ammeter and then going to the Helmholtz coil right here. And then over here, uh, you can hook up a voltmeter here, but we didn't do that. We just took the voltmeter up, this guy right here, right across the accelerating voltage, the electron gun. So right across here, we got 155, uh, Oh, actually, this was the current. This was the Helmholtz current. This is 1.553 amps. This is 310.8 volts right now. So that's what's creating the velocity. And then this is what's creating the B field right there. And you can see up here in the tube, you get a nice circular path for those two values of the, of the B field and accelerating voltage. And you can change either of those when you do the experiment. And then you can measure the radius of the circle. So in this particular case, you can see the meter stick, a glowing meter stick in the background. And uh, when you learn how to use that meter stick, you can easily measure the diameter of the circle and then cut it in half to get the radius, okay? So here I'm going to change the, the B field. And remember what we said, if the B field is strong, it will tighten up the circle. So I'm making the B field stronger and stronger, and it's getting smaller smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, now I'm going to loosen it up. The B field's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Now watch what happens when I go too far. Boom! You see, it's still in a circular path because the B field is still on, but it's really, really weak. Now watch, I'm going to turn it off completely. And it goes into a nice straight line. See that? All right, now here I'm going to turn it back on. And as it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, it puts it right into a circular path. All right, voltage is the same way. If I turn up the voltage, that means the particles have more momentum, so they're harder to turn. So that means the circle will get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you can see it getting bigger. And if you look over here, you see I'm up to 400 volts. See, I'm up to 403 volts right there. So here we'll make it a little bigger. And let's see if we can hit the glass. So 450, uh, there we go. We just hit the glass right there. All right, so it wants to go into a really big path. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Now, when we bring it down, now I can't change the mass in this experiment, I can't change the charge. But in your experiment, uh, the simulation online, you'll be able to do that. So you're gonna run the experiment a couple times, you'll just change the charge or the mass depending on, on the experiment. All right, now I am going to give the velocity a small component parallel to the B field. So it'll go into a helical path. And what I do is I just turn the whole, the whole tube, and you can see what it's doing there. How's that look, Tom? I can make it a little tighter. So it looks like a pigtail. All right, now if I turn it the other way, I can make it do a helical path 
in the forward direction. Look at that, isn't that spectacular? Look at that. So the bigger the component, the bigger the pitch of the helix. You see the, the further it travels in the time it takes to go around once. So you can see, you really see the, the helix, the coils of the helix get further and further apart. And that is, we're not studying that, but that's what the effect of having a, uh, a velocity where one of the components is parallel to the B field. And that is the experimental setup right there. And if you have any questions, you can always go back into the video and review whatever you need to, to review to help you with your experiment. Okay, so with that, I wish you well, God be with you, and uh, take good care.